those that witnessed you yesterday. We thank you for the doors you open. We thank you for those who are already saved. I pray, Lord, for uh, those who are not opening their mouths and not going to sing like they should, Lord. Uh, just help them to be more bold and help us to always have opportunities to utilize them for your work. Christ, thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, if you grab your Bibles with me this morning, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. <coughs> 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 1 down to verse 5. And the title of the message this morning is The Patient Waiting for Christ. And if you will, stand with me in reverence to God's Word. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the Word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Yeah. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. Lord, we just pray that you would just comfort our hearts today. Lord, to understand that in every situation, Lord, you are at work. Lord, uh, that you, uh, Lord, are uh, working all things together for our good. Love you and who are called according to your purpose. Lord, that as we live in this life and this time that we have upon this earth, Lord, that we are to live it, uh, keeping ourselves in your love and in the patient waiting uh, for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, just give us strength and Lord, wisdom and power in your Holy Spirit. Forgive us of our sins and where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so verse 5 tells us, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patient waiting for Christ. <clears throat> and so our hearts must be directed uh, into that love, and into the patient waiting of Jesus Christ. And we know that our hearts are directed by the Lord according to His Word. Amen. As we've already heard this morning in Sunday School class that in the study of the Word as we look into the uh, perfect law of liberty, into the mirror, into that glass, and we, re and, uh, we are, uh, and God reveals His glory to us in His Word that we're changed into that same glory. Uh, that God continues to change in us and direct our hearts closer to Him. And understanding what the love of God is. Amen. That God's love for us uh, is the reason that we have His mercy and His grace. And that the patient waiting for Christ is, is in living for Him in this life. And, and uh, trusting in Him and resting in Him. <clears throat> but a part of that waiting for Christ is, you know, it's, we think about waiting for someone. We think about waiting for, uh, you know... A loved one. And uh, if we didn't know where they were, or if we didn't know when they would be back, and all these things, it's, it, it gets kind of hard to wait for. And uh, poor Sister Christina this morning is dealing with something, and, and uh, her heart's heavy this morning because uh, of her kids. And, and uh, Sister Christina, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that patient waiting is hard, isn't it? Uh, when that loved one is someone... Uh, and that is so close to you and you don't know uh, exactly where they are or when they're coming back. Uh, but the thing and the comfort that we have in the Word of God and that the Lord Jesus Christ is that He just didn't leave just to leave. Uh, he didn't just leave us here to go through all the trials and the hard times and the things that we go through just because, uh, you know, uh, He wanted us to suffer for a little bit. That's just not how uh, His love for us works. 
There was a reason that he left, and there's a reason that he hasn't come back yet. And when we know the reasons for these things, they are what uh, consoles us and keeps us in the patient waiting for his return. And I want to look this morning at, at some of the things uh, that the Bible talks about of why he left, why he had to go. If you look at Hebrews chapter 9 with me this morning. <clears throat> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24 through 28 says for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hand now I want to stop here for a minute please don't read on if you think about the old tabernacle and you had the place where the priests would come and they would offer their sacrifices daily but then you had the holiest of holy, where only the high priest would enter in once a year to offer for his sins and the sins of the people once a year. It was the holiest of holies. Uh, where Aaron's rod was that budded and uh, the mercy seat and all that was there. Uh, and so the mercy seat was with the covenant and with the seraphims. Uh, covering over, and we understand all that was a picture, the physical things was a picture of the spiritual. Yeah. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus is our high priest, yeah. and that He offered Himself for the sins of the people, yeah. once and for all. And so He had to go and enter into the holiest of holy at the throne of God and present Himself the sacrifice for all. So this is why He had to go. Amen? We understand this. In verse 24, let's read it now. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Yeah. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have or often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath that he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Yeah. And so He has presented Himself now unto the holiest of holies at the throne of God in heaven which the things of the earth were a shadow of the true things that we see Jesus accomplishing for us, is that He presented Himself, the Lamb slain, as the sacrifice for all. And we understand from 2 Peter or, uh, chapter 3 that God is not slack concerning His promise as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And so that He is there in the holiest of holies, at the right hand of God, intercessing for us, amen, until all those who uh, He foreknew from the very beginning would put their faith and trust in Him has done so. And then we understand he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation to bring to us that salvation that He has paid for already. Amen? And that salvation is going to be our new home, our new body. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we shall all be changed. Amen? As the Bible tells us. Look at Hebrews chapter 8 and verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. We have such an high priest 
who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. So he is still acting as our minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. And that true tabernacle is his church. Amen. He is still acting minister over all the churches. Amen. He is still the one who is running. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us that he has given in his church. Uh, pastors and teachers and evangelists and all these different things for the perfecting of the saint, for the preaching of the Word, that we might all be grown up in Him into that spiritual man, unto a perfect man, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. And He is still working in the churches to continue to bring us into that perfect man, into Himself, which is bringing in us uh, the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding of the Word of God so that we are faithful ministers also. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. So just because he's at the right hand of God does not mean that he is still not working. Amen. He is still working for us and in us and through us for his good pleasure and his will. Chapter 10 Verses 10 through 22 says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all were set apart. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected for ever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And where's the holiest? The throne of God. Amen? Now what is he saying? Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, which is at the throne of God, by what? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. By a new and living way, which He hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say His flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. <clears throat> now we cannot physically go to the throne of God, but we can go in the Spirit by prayer entering into the holiest at the throne of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? So it's not like that because Jesus is at the right hand of God that we cannot reach because that's why He's given us this Holy Spirit and that's why He's given us the privilege and the opportunity to go to Him in prayer. Now that should put a new perspective on our prayers. Amen? <laughs> Is that when we pray, <laughs> it's not Jesus coming down to us, it's us going up to Him into the holiest. In other words, when we pray to God, we are coming before His throne. Amen in prayer. And he says, come boldly. Amen. That's what he says. He says, having therefore boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You say, you don't think that's what that means, but that's what the Bible tells us. If you look in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. 
says, seeing then, then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. When we go to the Lord in prayer, we are coming before the throne of God, before the throne of grace, to offer our prayers unto Him. Come boldly, therefore. Why? Because we understand that Jesus has therefore entered being a faithful high priest unto us so that we can now come before the throne of God and cast our care upon Him knowing that He cares for us. This is part of that patient waiting for Christ. Amen? Is knowing that at any time and any moment that we can come before His throne. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that an awesome thought? That at any moment, at any time, or whatever is going on in our life and whatever need that we have, that our prayers are not just hitting the ceiling, but our prayers, by our prayers, we are coming right before His throne and talking to Him. Amen. Saying, Lord, this is what's going on in my life. And this is how I need you. Amen. What an awesome thing it is. Having our high priest, faithful high priest, in the holiest of holies. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 24 through 28. says, but this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. <laughs> Amen. Oh. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For thus he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. Yeah. You see, He has an unchangeable priesthood. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible tells us that His Word does not change. Amen? His yeah. Word is forever settled in heaven. Amen? We don't have to worry about if it's going to be the same tomorrow as it was today, being able to come before His presence, because guess what? His Word does not change. Amen. Amen? And has Jesus always been there to answer and intercede for us at the throne of God when we come before His throne in prayer seeking the needs and the, the necessities and all the problems that we face? He is always there. He is never going to leave us nor forsake us. Amen? Yeah. And that we can always trust that He is there for us. Amen. You see, it makes the patient waiting for Christ so much more bearable now. Amen? <laughs> Understanding just what He is doing for us, interceding for us, Understanding our infirmities. Understanding our necessities. Understanding our trials and tribulations. <clears throat> Look at Romans chapter 8. <coughs> Romans chapter 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 334 <clears throat> says likewise or let's back up to verse 25 well 24 so good for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Sometimes we don't know what to say, do we? Sometimes we're in such a, a, a place that our words just can't... We can't find the words that describe the feelings that we are having. You know it's in those times or maybe it's, it's something that we, we just, our minds aren't working the way it, we want them to work. But even in those times, all we have to do is call out to the name of Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Even in those times, all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus and guess what? The Spirit knows. Amen? But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You see how much help God has given to us? He hasn't left us alone. <clears throat> yes, Jesus is back in the throne of God and at the right hand. But He is just as near to us as if He were here in person. Amen? Because we have His Word and we have His Spirit dwelling in us. And we are able, because of His intercession for us, to be able to go straight to the throne of God and bring our petitions and our prayers to Him. And even when we don't know what to say, the Spirit intercesses for us, making groanings which cannot be uttered in a way that we could never express what we're going through. All we have to do is just... Come boldly to the throne. Amen. Yeah. Even if all we say is, Jesus, I need you. He knows. Amen. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we face. And it says, And he, he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. <clears throat> he knows what we're trying to say and what we need before we even speak it. Because He maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. You see, He's not through with us. He still has a lot of work to do. Amen? Yeah. As the song that the children sing, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took Him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient He must be because He's still working on me. Yeah. Amen? He still has a work to do and He's working all things together for our good. Why? Because He predestinated us whom He foreknew to be conformed to the image of His Son. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom He called, them He also justified. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Yeah. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is He that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Amen. 
Listen, we have things in our favor. Amen? Why? Because we have the favor of God. And because we have the favor of God, who can stand against us yeah. if God be for us? Amen. Amen? Listen, we just need to hold on to that hope. You say, I don't see it though. It seems like it's the opposite of what the Bible says. It seems like everything is going against me. Well, listen, he just told us that hope that is seen is not hope. Because if you see it, why do you yet hope for it? Amen? Listen, sometimes it does seem like things are the opposite of what the Bible says. You know, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth, and it seems like it's always the, the proud and the, the strong and, and, and the rich and the wicked that, that inherit all the, the things of the earth. It always seems like maybe the Bible has it wrong, but I'm going to tell you, by faith we understand that it has it exactly right. <laughs> because even though things seem to be chaos, it is God working them together for our good. Now we might not be able to see it right now, but we by faith believe it and stand upon an understanding that you know what? God has it all under control. God is still on the throne. Amen. And our Savior, our High Priest, faithful unto us, is at His right hand interceding for us. Yeah. Amen. And so what hope that brings to our hearts and minds, understanding that even while we're here in this earth and we have to face the tribulations that we face, He said, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter one, verses four through nine, <clears throat> says, "I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ." Amen. That in everything ye are enriched by Him, in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Listen, God is working in us by His Son, Jesus Christ, who paid for our sin to what? Perfect in us. Amen? To uh, Himself, that we would come behind in no gift while we are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a song that the cathedrals used to sing. <laughs> if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve Amen? Yes. Isn't that a great way to look at it? Yes. If we never had problems, we wouldn't know how great a God we have that we serve that can solve those problems and can bring us peace and joy even in the midst of troubles and trials. Yeah. <laughs> it was down in the valley of the shadow of death that it says by the psalmist and he prepares a table in the midst of my enemies. Amen. <laughs> I tell you what, we have a feast with God wherever we're at because He's for us and not against us. Amen. And the Bible tells us that His thoughts toward us are good. Amen. It's not evil that He thinks against us, but all the things that we go through <laughs> He's going to confirm us through. Not despite the world, but through the world. And through the trials. And through the, the problems that we face. Is He going to confirm us 
and <coughs> bring us to that day that we may be blameless before Him at His coming. God is faithful. Don't forget that. Don't forget how faithful He is to us. Look at chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. It says, Wherefore let him that thinketh, or excuse me, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. <laughs> you know why? Because the best place to be is on your knees. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> because when you're on your knees, that's exactly where God can work in your life. Amen? Is when you've humbled yourself to Him. So don't think that you stand. Amen? <coughs> and if you stand, it's only because God lifted you up. <clears throat> there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Yeah. Amen? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. All the things that we go through, it's common. It's commonplace. All the temptation, all the trials, all the tribulations, it's commonplace. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. <coughs> and where can we escape to? <laughs> Amen. The throne of grace. <laughs> the way to our escape is to the throne of grace where Jesus is at the right hand of God. Amen. Where we can come before the throne boldly to receive grace and help in the time of need. You see, when we're in heavy manifold temptations or trials or tribulations or afflictions in our life, we can flee to the throne of God, amen, and come before His throne with our prayers and with thanksgiving and rejoicing in Him. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 <coughs> <coughs> and we'll be through. <coughs> God is faithful. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 through 24 says, Now we exhort you brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Listen, it's times like these that it's hardest to believe, right? But that's the righteousness of faith. Is that when God's Word says it, we can mark it down yeah. and take it to the bank. Amen? That we know, that we know, that we know that His Word is true. Yeah. And that He is faithful. And He will do what He has promised to do. Even when Satan is doing all that he can to make us think that God doesn't care and he's not there for us. When Satan's doing all that he can do to make us think that his word is not true. 
Listen, that's in the times that it is most important that we understand how much God is faithful to us. Don't forget it. And don't allow yourself to become just in despair. Because we might be <clears throat> in trials and tribulation, but we are not forsaken. Amen. We are not forsaken. And yes, Jesus had to leave and He had to go and present Himself in the holiest of holies. But guess what? He is there making intercession for us. And He is coming again. Amen. Amen. That where He is, we may be also. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You this morning for Your Word. <clears throat> Lord, we just pray that You would direct each of our hearts into Your love and to the love of God and into the patient waiting for Jesus Christ, our Lord, and His second coming. Lord, we pray for Sister Christina this morning and uh, the trial that she's going through. Lord, we just pray that You would just get the glory. Lord, that You would bind the adversary. Lord, that You would deliver, Lord, her through this time. Lord, to show Your power in her life. Lord, that Your name would be lifted up. Lord, we just pray for each one here, Lord, that we might all work together for the furtherance of the faith of the gospel and understand that, Lord, we are to continue in the faith, grounded and settled and not moved away from the hope that we have in You. Lord, understanding that it is important for us, Lord, to continue in these things. Knowing that, Lord, You have not left us. You have not forsaken us. But, Lord, You're on the throne making intercession for us. And, Lord, that You are working all things together for our good. Lord, thank You for Your love and Your mercy, even though, Lord, we don't deserve it. Lord, forgive us of our sins and where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing. Back to the book. Bible stands. <coughs>
God is in front of every one of us. He knows we've got what we face each day, and the trials and temptations that we go through. Thank you, dear God, that you have told us that you're always with us, that you never forsake us. Help us to understand and know more about Jesus. Yes. Bless your Father in these times of hardship. God, may our faith look unto thee. Yes. And may we be stronger through the outcome of what you have allowed us to go through. Yes. Forgive us for we pay you. Bless this offering and those that have guilt, those that have not. We'll be careful to give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand up, stand up to Jesus. 